One minute ago, beneath Mount Etna, a silent blast nearly 20 kilometers deep unleashed more energy than some surface eruptions without spilling a single drop of lava. Scientists never saw it coming. Entire monitoring systems failed to warn of the deep seismic surge now rippling across Sicily. If this was just the opening shot, what threat is still hidden far below Etna's slopes? Silence hung over the slopes. No smoke, no rumble, not even a tremor at the summit. Yet within seconds, seismic alarms blared in labs from Catania to Rome. At 10.42 in the morning, sensors registered a massive shockwave radiating outward from deep beneath Mount Etna. But there was no eruption, no plume, no warning sign on the surface. The explosion unfolded in absolute darkness, nearly 20 kilometers down, where the crust is supposed to be too rigid for such violence. The event broke every expectation. Scientists pored over live data, searching for clues they might have missed. Their screens showed a sudden, sharp spike. Energy was released in a way no one had witnessed before. For decades, every major Etna event had announced itself with days of tremors visible swelling, or bursts of gas. But this time, the mountain stayed quiet above ground while chaos erupted below. The shock registered across Sicily in under a minute, rattling windows and nerves alike. In the control rooms, disbelief gave way to urgency. If a blast of this magnitude could happen without any outward sign, what else might be lurking in the unseen depths? The rules of volcanic threat had just changed and the old warning systems were suddenly obsolete. Scientists and residents alike faced a new reality. Danger could strike without a single hint from the mountain's familiar face. At depths between 15 and 20 kilometers, the crust behaves in ways that challenge everything volcanologists thought they understood about Mount Etna. Down here, the rock is hot, ductile, and under immense pressure. Conditions that usually absorb and muffle stress, not release it in sudden bursts. Yet this time, the energy did not follow the familiar pathways toward the surface. Instead, it surged through a hidden network of deep faults, some never before mapped. According to Dr. Marco Ferretto Carino, who specializes in Mediterranean tectonics, this event accessed a structural intersection scientists had only theorized about in models. The seismic waves that radiated out carried a distinct signature, one that pointed to a rupture in a zone previously considered geologically locked. Unlike shallow eruptions, which give off gas, heat, and swelling at the surface, this deep mechanism sent its warning only through the language of seismic pulses, sharp, fast, and almost impossible to distinguish from background noise until it was already happening. The fact that energy could escape from such depths, bypassing the upper magma chambers entirely, suggests that Etna's plumbing is far more complex than surface monitoring can reveal. For decades, instruments have watched for magma rising just below the summit. Now the focus shifts downward, into a realm where traditional sensors lose their edge and the mountain's true architecture comes into play. This event has forced scientists to reconsider how stress moves through the crust and how invisible faults might connect distant parts of the volcano in ways no one expected. Deep beneath Mount Etna, there is a hidden world where even the most advanced instruments struggle to see. For years, the Italian National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, INGV, has relied on a network of seismic sensors, ground deformation trackers, and gas detectors to keep watch over the volcano. These tools are finely tuned to catch the earliest hints of magma rising toward the surface. But the recent event exposed a critical flaw, the system's blind zone, stretching from about 10 to 20 kilometers below ground, where signals fade and data thins out. In this zone, stress can build and release without setting off the alarms that usually give scientists days sometimes weeks, to prepare. Hours before the shockwave, only the faintest anomalies flickered across monitoring screens. What should have been a cascade of warning signs, a slow buildup of tremors, shifts in ground tilt, 
changes in gas composition, never materialized. Instead, the deep crust stayed silent until the last possible moment. Dr. Julia Rinaldi, INGV's monitoring director, described the experience as watching a locked door suddenly burst open with no footsteps in the hallway. The monitoring network, built to catch shallow magma movement, simply was not designed to capture stress signals at such depth. This technical gap is not just a matter of missed data, it is a fundamental challenge for volcanic safety. The instruments that have protected Sicilian towns for decades were never calibrated for the kind of deep, rapid energy release that just occurred. The disparity between hours and weeks in detection time has forced scientists to admit that for the deepest threats, they are still operating with partial vision. The blind zone beneath Etna is now a central concern, not just for researchers, but for everyone who lives within reach of the mountain's hidden power. As the dust settles, questions about how to close this gap have become urgent. The next event could come without warning, and the current safeguards may not be enough to keep pace with what is happening out of sight. At 10.43 in the morning, the ground in Catania lurched sideways. Glass shattered in shop fronts. Sirens wailed as masonry cracked along Via Etnia. The city's municipal emergency line logged over 200 calls in the first five minutes. Reports of ceiling tiles collapsing, fallen cornices, and scattered debris blocking intersections. In the suburb of Mister Bianco, a primary school evacuated as tremors rattled desks and sent dust drifting from old plaster. The earthquake, measured at magnitude 5.2, radiated outward from beneath Etna's southeastern flank. Its energy pulse traveled through the crust at nearly four kilometers per second, reaching the Calabrian coast in just over two minutes. In the Maltese archipelago, over a hundred kilometers away, residents reported swaying chandeliers and pools sloshing in hotel courtyards. Seismic records later confirmed the shockwave signature as distinct, sharp onset, deep origin, and an unusually coherent wavefront. The Italian Civil Protection Department issued a red alert for the greater Catania area, citing structural risk in buildings constructed before 1980. Engineers began rapid assessments of bridges and hospitals while traffic gridlocked as people tried to reach family members. Catania's deputy mayor, Paolo Grasso, addressed the press within the hour. He said, we have never experienced an earthquake from Etna's depths that move this fast or hit this hard. Our teams are inspecting all critical infrastructure. Residents should remain cautious and await further instructions. By midday, aftershocks continued to ripple through the region, though none matched the violence of the initial jolt. Emergency shelters opened in municipal gyms and churches. Across Sicily, the event's reach was clear, not just in toppled chimneys or fractured roads, but in the sudden awareness that Etna's power could now strike without warning in ways no one had planned for. The shockwave's rapid journey through the Mediterranean's fault lines left scientists and civil authorities scrambling to understand what other threats might be set in motion. Twelve hours after the initial shock, ground sensors along Etna's southeastern flank recorded displacement that stunned even the most seasoned geologists. The slope, already known as one of the most unstable volcanic flanks in Europe, shifted more in half a day than it typically does in six months. GPS arrays and laser reflectors captured the numbers in real time. The southeastern sector slid nearly 18 centimeters, a rate three times faster than any previous episode on record. For years, scientists tracked this slow creep, sometimes a few millimeters per month, believing the process to be gradual, almost glacial. But the deep stress release changed the rules overnight. Dr. Elena Sardi, a geodynamic modeler who has spent decades mapping Etna's underground architecture, described the movement as a mechanical chain reaction. When the deep crust released its pent-up energy, it did not just shake the surface. It primed a network of faults that run like hidden seams beneath the volcano. 
some connecting to the Ionian seafloor, others snaking inland toward the Sicilian rift zone. These faults, once thought to move independently, now appeared to respond in concert. Sarti's simulations showed how the sudden jolt at depth sent ripples through the entire system, unlocking friction at key intersections and allowing the southeastern flank to lurch forward. This was not just a matter of centimeters on a chart. The accelerated slide increased the risk of a catastrophic sector collapse, a scenario where a large chunk of the volcano could break away and send debris toward coastal towns. Engineers and emergency planners scrambled to update hazard maps, while Sardi's team re-ran their models with the new data. The results suggested that the system, now primed by the deep event, had entered a period of heightened instability. For the first time, the possibility of rapid, unpredictable movement was no longer theoretical. The ground itself had become a moving target, and the margin for error had vanished. Probability models rarely offer sharp lines in the sand, but this time the numbers leave little room for comfort. After the deep stress release, seismic forecasting teams at the INGV recalibrated their risk projections using real-time data from Aetna's underground network. The models now point to a 70% chance of another major stress event, possibly even larger, within the next 30 to 45 days. This figure is not speculation. It is the result of running thousands of simulations across every plausible scenario. Factoring in the sudden acceleration of the southeastern flank, the new fault interactions, and the persistent aftershocks still rattling the region. The 70% window looms large over Sicily. It means that statistically, another deep rupture is more likely than not before the month is out. The odds are based not just on what has already happened, but on how the system is now behaving, unstable, primed, and still redistributing energy through a network of faults that scientists are only beginning to map. The ground beneath Etna is no longer following familiar patterns. Instead, it is operating on a hair trigger, with even minor shifts potentially unlocking further stress releases from depths that defy easy detection. For emergency planners, this probability translates into a period of heightened alert, Civil protection agencies are coordinating with geophysical labs to update contingency plans, while local officials urge residents to prepare for possible disruptions. The sense of waiting is palpable, knowing that the next event could strike with the same lack of warning, or even less. Each hour that passes without incident brings a measure of relief, but the clock is ticking. The models offer no comfort, only a stark reminder the mountain system is now in play and the next 30 to 45 days could redefine what it means to live in the shadow of Etna. Signals from the deep stress release beneath Etna did not stop at Sicily's shores. Less than an hour after the initial event, seismic arrays in Naples picked up a faint but distinct energy pulse beneath Mount Vesuvius, a volcano that has slept for generations and sits within sight of three million people. The Italian National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology confirmed that the pulse matched the timing and frequency signature of Etna's shockwave, raising fresh questions about how interconnected these volcanic systems might be. For decades, scientists believed the Campanian and Sicilian volcanic provinces operated independently. Now data suggested that a single event in Etna's deep crust could send ripples through fault networks spanning hundreds of kilometers. The economic fallout arrived just as quickly. At the port of Catania, structural engineers ordered a full suspension of cargo operations before noon. Inspections revealed hairline fractures in quay walls and unexpected subsidence in container yards. The Italian Coast Guard issued a directive rerouting commercial shipping away from the eastern Sicilian coast, citing aftershock risks and the potential for further ground movement. Mediterranean shipping authorities scrambled to coordinate new routes, forcing dozens of vessels to anchor in open waters or divert toward Augusta and Gioia Tauro. In a statement, shipping authority representative Matteo LaRusso described the situation as the most disruptive port closure since the 2002 lava flows. He warned that every hour of downtime 
threatened not just local businesses, but vital supply chains linking Southern Europe to North Africa and the Middle East. By mid-afternoon, the combined threat of seismic instability and logistical paralysis was felt from Naples to Malta. The realization set in. Etna's deep stress release was not just a Sicilian crisis. It had become a Mediterranean emergency, touching lives and livelihoods far beyond the shadow of the volcano. Hazard maps for Mount Etna have always been drawn around what can be seen and measured, lava flows, ash plumes, and the slow creep of the volcano's flanks. The recent deep stress release has forced a fundamental reconsideration of what it means to live in the shadow of an active volcano. For decades, the threat was defined by surface events, each one giving at least some warning, a swelling summit, a burst of gas, a tremor that hinted at what might come next. That framework no longer holds. The latest event revealed that catastrophic energy can be unleashed from invisible depths, bypassing every safeguard built on surface observation. Hazard classification now faces a new frontier, the absence of any eruption, combined with the scale of seismic damage and flank movement, demonstrates that a volcano's most dangerous moments may not involve lava or ash at all. Instead, the real risk may lie in these silent, deep ruptures, events that can trigger earthquakes, destabilize slopes, and disrupt entire regions without a single visible sign. The traditional categories of volcanic threat, explosive, effusive, phreatic, fail to capture this new reality. A non-eruptive event has proven capable of causing widespread impact, forcing experts to rethink how hazards are ranked and communicated. The call for a surveillance overhaul is now urgent. Current monitoring systems, designed to catch shallow unrest, offer little protection against hazards that originate beyond their reach. Scientists are pushing for new technology, denser seismic arrays, deep borehole sensors, and advanced modeling tools capable of tracking stress accumulation where the crust is thickest and most unpredictable. The lesson is clear. Volcanic danger is no longer limited to what erupts from the summit. The unseen can be just as destructive, and only a fundamental shift in how threats are detected will keep populations truly safe. Today, over 1 million people live within 30 kilometers of Mount Etna. As deep stress events outpace our ability to predict them, the margin for error narrows. Modern life unfolds atop ancient shifting ground, and the science meant to protect us is still catching up. In the shadow of giants, uncertainty remains the only constant. Share your thoughts below on how we should prepare for the unknown.